Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Winner's Journey podcast, where we share the secrets behind the success story so that you get inspired and unleash the winner in you. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Viviana Puello, CEO of Art Tour International Magazine, and my mission in life is to inspire you so that you're happy and contribute to that energy to make our world a better place. So welcome to a very exciting episode. I promise you this is this is going to be something that is going to leave you wanting to do so much more. Today is my absolute honor to present an award-winning master artist from Argentina who is considered as one of the most influential and critically acclaimed artists to have emerged in the international art scene in the last decade. He's recognized globally for his intriguing and stunning compositions, where he depicts his unforgettable memories or compelling moments. And each piece has a dramatic or romantic character and tells its own story. He has an incredible journey. He's trained in classical methods, but he's got his own unique style. We're going to be sharing about that. And even though he's been influenced by the artistic heritage of Impressionism, he explored a unique approach and developed a style he calls Neo-Emotionalism. And without further ado, thanks so much, Fabian Perez, for uh -huh. joining us. <laughs> that was quite an intro. I had to read a little bit. <laughs> okay, it's okay. That's a long one. So it was a very good <laughs> I wanted to make sure we share most of, you know, the public knew who we were chatting with. I was like, uh, are you talking about me? Or <laughs> <laughs> Fabian, so something that I love to share, and so many people know about you. So many people have seen your works. I see your works everywhere, everywhere. Um, Let's share about your journey because I think it's so inspiring. Your story is really inspiring. And for anyone watching, some of the audience that is watching their fans, they might not be artists, but we all have that in common that we want to know how do you get to that success? How do you get to the level where you are right now? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I think it's a combination of three things. Always, you know, when my students or people, you know, around, they, they ask me, I tell them all the time the same thing that I think it's a combination of, first of all, you need to have focus in life. You need to have a target that I think is really important to know what you want in life. Uh, secondly, I think you need to have a lot of discipline to pursue what you're looking for, to train every day, to do everything, every day, something that is going to get you closer to your, your target. And I think the third thing is to have a lot of confidence in yourself. You know, I think it's a, it's a triangle without, without one of the elements of the triangle is going to collapse everything. So if you have a good target, uh, discipline and self-confidence that you know you're going to get there. So I think that's the key for everything. More you have of those things com combined, so higher you can get, you know. So as an example, if, let's say if you're going to be a doctor. So you know that first of all, the target is to be a doctor. Secondly, you need to study. And third, you know that if you study, you know what you want, you're going to get there because it's a matter of time only. The same thing in anything in life is the same thing. And it depends how much effort you put in all those things, you know. And then the rest is karma, of course. Of course. And I know you're you're very well prepared for what you do. Of course, you started in Italy. Can you share a little bit about that journey at the beginning of your career? Yeah. Actually, uh, I left Argentina when I was about... Uh, 18, 19, 20, I don't remember exactly. I went to Brazil and then to visit family and I stayed, stayed there for a while. And then went back to Argentina and then I decided to, to move and I went to Italy uh, and I spent there like uh, six, seven years. And actually in the north of Italy, but I, I was traveling a lot for work. And, uh, and actually there is when I decided to become a painter. Uh, I was living in a, in a hotel and actually, uh, the, the owner of the hotel that was my friend uh, was giving me a room in the in the back of the hotel. And actually, that was my studio where I was painting for fun. And suddenly, uh, a lot of tourists they were coming over and see the work. And suddenly, one time, one she said, "You know, how much is that painting?" So once she she asked me for that, so I I thought, man, I mean, so she's asking me, she's gonna buy it. So I tell her probably thirty five dollars or something like that. 
And so she bought it. And then I said, well, if I sold one product, I sell everything. And since then, I started becoming a little more, putting more effort in selling my work. And in that way, I can really pay full time. So in that way, I decided to become an artist professionally. And that um, was better for me because I don't have to be thinking about nothing else. Just only have to do is like, I just be in the studio and, and create. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. I think that's a dream for every artist, right? So, like that happen. So. Yeah. I think the thing is, you need to be determined. You know, you need to know what you, what you want in life. Because many people, they come over to me and they said, you know, you're lucky because you do what you, what you love to do. And I said, yeah, I'm really lucky because I do that. And what you, what you would like to do? What, what would it be for you to do something that you love to do in life? And they don't know. So if you don't know, it's really difficult to, to achieve something that you don't know, you know? First of all, you need to have your idea clear and then pursue it, you know? Absolutely. How has it been these days? Uh, I know that with the lockdown, um, a lot of artists have been painting a lot. Some of them have been a little bit down. Uh, everybody, not just artists. I think it's been a challenging time for us. How was it for you last year? That was crazy. You know, at the same time, uh, practically, you know, my life didn't change much because uh, I do the same thing over and over. It's, you know, I stay, spend time with my life, with my, with my family. Uh, I paint in the morning, I go to the studio. Uh, I stay spending the whole day with my family here. The only thing that didn't change much is that, you know, my kids, uh, they didn't go to school, so they just stay at home. And I enjoy it really much. And I paint less than ever because I just, I don't want to go to the studio. I just want to stay with them, you know? <laughs> so we, we play a lot of music. We just stay together. We watch movies. And, you know, it was a lot of fun, actually. The only, the only bad part is, like, uh, economically, it was terrible because, you know, I couldn't do shows. Uh, galleries closed. I couldn't go to promote anywhere. I didn't do any tour, any shows. So economically, everything was uh, catastrophic, practically. But uh, but uh, fun, it was a lot of fun, actually, yeah. So yeah. let me ask you something, because you have so many works that are so inspiring. I think everybody that knows your work has their own favorite. Do you have any works that, that you can tell us, that you can share with us that have touched your heart in a specific way? of your art well uh, i think you know everything that i paint is like my babies you know it's really difficult to say i love the younger more than the older you know so i love all of them because they're my creation and they're a particular time and a space in my life so they're, they're all important and they're all but i think uh there is a few pieces that they're really like, iconic i think um you know people recognize me by those pieces one could be entitled to which is uh, one man looking forward and the other ones, you know, uh, looking backwards. Uh, that that's reflect pretty much what I do in my life. I'm, uh, I'm an introvert. I'm a guy who is like, I like to be by myself. I like to observe people, but I, I don't like to interact with them. I like to observe them and, you know, make my own conclusions. And uh, so that, that's really what, what really uh, identify me as an artist, as a person. Then it's a lot of uh, other pieces like, you know, uh, Lucy, my wife, that I paint her many times, uh, that everything evokes uh, different and different moments in our life. Um, and then now I paint my kids also, that, uh, but nothing for sale, it's just for portraits. And then um, what I've been doing lately is a series called Casablanca. It's a series of, uh, of painting that is called Casablanca because it's something that um, when you see that period of life that was so difficult, so, so different, so classy, so uh, elegant, uh, so many principles. And so that doesn't make any sense in the world today. You see the theater is empty because practically they're lost. I mean, nobody would understand that. They feel like uh, nobody, nobody got them, you know, because in that moment was amazing uh, that, you know, it's so classy, so in love, a man, a woman, you know, so much passion and stuff. And that today doesn't practically make any sense. So life is so diverse right now. It's so different that it looks like I, it, that doesn't make any sense today, you know? So that's why it's called Missing Casablanca. And they, they, you know, the actors, they're looking at the movie theater and they see that the theater is empty because nobody is, no, they, they already pass, you know? They already pass. Whatever they do in that movie today is like, uh, it's, it's gone, you know? So that's why I call it Missing Casablanca, you know. Then I have another um, another piece right here that I really like much. But uh, it's a lot of, uh, 
skeletons. So this is something that you know, for people, it's like, I like to confuse people a little bit. You know? <laughs> so the thing is like, uh, when they see this, uh, they say, okay, dead, something really uh, negative because he's, you know, people is already dead, he's, you know, schools and stuff. But for me, I think it's a great reminder. I think when I, all the time that I see, you know, like uh, schools and stuff, I think it's a reminder that we are here temporarily just for a period of the time. And that's a reminder for you to figure out that, you know, just enjoy now because you don't know how long you're gonna be around. So to me, it's something really positive that, you know, it's like a wake up call, you know, like, okay, just move on. Don't be the victim. Just do what you need to do, make some choices. And it's up to you, you know? So that's why, you know, the, the schools is like, okay, this is gonna be, you don't know how long. So just make the best, you know? And the good thing is like uh, many of the things we can't really uh, do anything, but we have something, a power that we can really change our attitude in life. You know, that depends about us. It's not about, you know, somebody else is changing it or not. You can, everything always, you have to have, you know, the positive view of things and that's gonna help you in life, you know? Right, the power to, how do we, we react to the times and to situations and people? Absolutely, yeah. And that you can train that too. It like, sometimes you think like it's an instinct or it's a reaction, but you can train your reactions too. More you, more you work on them, your reaction is gonna be different after you train them, you know? Right, right. There's that, I feel like in your work, there's always a sense of nostalgia. There's always that bringing us back to a time. And I see that in Casablanca as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, my goal is like uh, to, bring, to bring back certain times or to show people something that we would like to be in, in, you know, in, a, in a place like uh, I would like something in 20 years to happen. So I paint it today. So I trying to make it real in 20 years. Or some, some stuff like uh, I saw it before, like Casablanca, and I like to bring back to, to show to the young generations now and say, look, this is how you know, we grow up. You know, look at how romantic, how beautiful, how classy, how elegant, you know, how much principled education, you know, that, you know, that was really beautiful. So that's why I bring in things, you know, from the future or from the past, you know, and, and sometimes from the present, like a celebrations and, you know, great time with my, with my people, with my friends and, uh, you know, just show life, you know, but always it's like a, the common denominator of my work is like beauty. It's, it's always like a positive. It's nothing like, I don't like to paint problems. You know, we have enough problems. I want to paint solutions. You know, I don't want to be painting like complaining, oh, because of that, oh, because of that. I just want to paint solutions. You know, something that gives you a reason to, to believe and to be alive, you know. I don't want to be complaining. It's a lot of artists are really complaining everywhere. So I just want to give you something more positive, you know. That's such a great, that is such a great, um message and relief <laughs> because we hear that right especially with artists um everything that's happening right now it's so so much turmoil around us and there's a lot of artists focusing on this and i'm always saying what you're saying we need to focus on something on something beautiful yeah yeah it's only one life you know that we know at least and uh you don't want to spend the time like uh complaining about that you're a victim because somebody else if it was different it wasn't be like that or you were you know what, it's your choice. If you choose to be every day complaining and nobody cares, you know, nobody cares. You can be complaining and complaining, drama, people can listen to you because you make a big deal, but then they turn around and they keep living anyway. So it's about you. You need to live your life at the best possible because as soon as you know, you're gonna be really old and you're gonna be dead. So that's why are you gonna make so much problem, you know? Just enjoy your life. And if the people doesn't care about you enjoying life, well, it's not your problem, you know, you need to enjoy your life because it's just you, it's just, you're in charge, you know? Yes, absolutely. What are you planning for this year? This year is going to be better. We're declaring that it's going to be positive, more productive, more prosperous than 2020 <laughs> for sure. Uh, is this going to be a comeback year for you too? Well, I hope so, you know. The thing is like uh, every year for me, every day that you're alive, you're, you're you know, you're healthy, you with your people that you love. So, I mean, always can be worse, always can be worse, you know? And I think, you know, if, you know, unfortunately we learn in adversity, you know, a human being doesn't learn when everything goes well. So the only thing, the only way for us to reflect and learn is when we are in adversity. Otherwise we just laugh and we just have a good time and everything, but we don't learn anything. But when we are in adversity is when we learn the most. 
probably 2020, you know, through the history is going to be the year that teach us the best lesson in life. So to have been teaching a, a great lesson in life is not that bad. So probably, you know, you change with the future, you change the way that you're going to see, you know, the 2020. So I don't have expectation. I, I just want to be healthy and just, you know, keep providing with something that I love, something to what the all essential for my family. So meanwhile, I can do that. Well, the rest is on me, you know, what I'm going to do, you know, I just, I just grateful for every day, you know, so it always can be worse, always can be worse, you know. That's beautiful to hear because that's, I think that's success for everyone is different. Yeah, and yeah. I, one thing that I always repeat to the artists is like, don't measure success for the measure of your bank account or how many followers you have or how many people are liking your posts or I don't know how much money you're making because that's going to go up and down. So in order for you to feel successful, like you say, yeah. it's, you know, be happy with what you're doing and be yeah. grateful for what you're doing. To me, I mean, the, a lot of people, they say that, you know, it's a cliche. Most of the time the people say, you know, I just searching for help, for happiness. I just searching, I just want to be happy. But when you, when you think about it, you know, it's really difficult to be happy every time, every day, the whole time, because, Unfortunately, we have certain moments that, that are really bad, right? Like uh, we lost somebody, somebody that we love, or we got sick and stuff. But it's something that you can achieve, and it's peace and harmony. Because mm -hmm. when you do things to the max, and you do your best and everything, sometimes you won't be happy for some reason, but you're going to be in peace and in harmony because you did as much as you can. So that is something that's reachable, something that could be reachable all the time. You know, happiness comes and goes. You can be, some people is happy most of the time. Some people is less of the time, but you can be uh, at peace and in harmony at the same time, even in the adversity. So that, that's my goal. That to me is being successful. When you reach that point, that balance, I think you're successful. Well, that's, that's inspiring. And I want to ask you about your creative process. Let, let's go to your art because it's, um, when you see it, I, I'd love to hear, how do you conceptualize your work? How do you, how the idea comes and develops into the final piece? Well, actually, uh, the idea is the, is, the, is the longest part of the work, actually. And probably the most difficult too. You know, painting, of course, is, you know, it's not easy. You know, you need to work in something white and suddenly you need to give it, you know, a perspective and a proportion and, and deepness and stuff and only by colors. And so it's not easy, right? But the idea is the most difficult. Something that, you know, it grows in your mind and probably stay for years sometimes, for years. And then until you figure it out, you know, and, and especially in my case, I like to work uh, and study a piece when I have it already done in my head. I don't like to be wondering. Uh, you know, I, I know many artists that they go to the canvas and started wondering with an idea and go back and forth. And you can tell that, you know, at the end, that painting doesn't look really solid. You know what I mean? It looks a little bit like, a, you know. coming and going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of a, like your mind. It doesn't really specify in your mind what you want. But, and then, you know, the result is something that probably you're happy with it. But it wasn't something that you thought. It just came out because you don't even know. I like to finish the painting in my head first. And then, of course, there's going to be variations sometimes because I, I started painting and I figured out that it could be better. It could be change something. But when you have the painting in your mind and you started painting, the process is going to be different. It's going to be more secure. It's going to be more established. It's going to be more solid. It's going to be, you know, uh, when you see it, it's going to be powerful. It's going to be more powerful than when you're just wondering, you know? So and sometimes the idea takes takes a long, really long time. It could take sometimes like a, from months to years, you know. Oh wow! Has, do you have any idea that took years? Yeah, I mean, many many things. Still, I have ideas in my head that I, I didn't find yet. I didn't have a solution yet for for because as a painter, uh, you don't have a whole book to write and tell a story. We have just one image. So in that image could be it's an infinite of point of views. So you can be, you know, 360 point of view, but you need to pick one of those, one of those and say, okay, this is going to be the painting. So it's not a, an easy decision that, you know, once you have an idea and you say like, okay, I'm going to paint a brunette, right? Yeah, but how, <laughs> you know, 
is infinite ways to paint a brunette. And what she's going to be doing with a glass of wine, yeah. But good luck with that. Okay, you need to define the position, the lighting, the pose, the cropping, the the back, the background. Uh, you know how much you want to show, how much you don't want to show. Mystery. You know all those elements is is you know if it comes into a painting, not just painting a brunette. It's just you know how you want to paint it. How it's going to be? How it's going to be? Just that image, only one image that's going to be successful. You know you can you don't have you know that much room to be wandering like at 200 pages or the whole movie is just one image that you have. And that has to be the most powerful, you know? That's a great perspective. I, I do a lot of writing, so I, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. So well, as a writer, I also like to do the same thing. When I, when I write the stuff, I like to use the minimum words to explain everything. You know, only, only genius people achieve that. Like for instance, you know, you can write something and say three pages explaining, I don't know, the soul or whatever it is, or the lack, or lucky or whatever it is. So you explain this and that because of love. I say this because of that. But when you say in a few, in a sentence, with a few, just a few words in a sentence, and you just make it, you just need it just for geniuses. That That's what geniuses do, you know? So that's why I like to really take away, abstract more and more and more and more the phrase until it's just a few words. You know, sometimes you, I get it, sometimes I don't, you know, probably when people doesn't understand it, that means that I didn't explain it well, you know? Yeah. Tell us about your book. Well, actually, yeah, I, I did the last one probably about a year ago, I think, already. Uh, it was a year ago, right? Yeah. Uh, I think it was May last year. Uh, it's called, um, what is it right here? Oh, look at that. I found one. <laughs> this is my last, my last one. It's New Emotionalism. The new era. Yeah, I call it that way. It's like a, I, you know, it's like a who, who was born before the egg or the chicken, you know. So this is like a, the painting, is a painting of a painter painting herself. So to get created, so he's he's coming out from the painting and what he's finished it, you know. And I think I, I choose this this subject because I think this is a good beginning for me. I think it's uh, after so many years that I've been in the art business. I I thought this this year is gonna be something really special. I don't know. I have the feeling that it's gonna be something really special for my for my work, my career, uh, me as a, as a person. And uh, I, I I don't know. I just think this uh, is a really new era for me of creativity in, in life. You know. Well, sounds incredible, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be. Thank you. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. so if we want the book, we go to your website, right, to get the book. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Okay. Okay. I want a copy of the book. <laughs> <laughs> you have one. I'll send you one. I'll send you one. Yeah. yeah, thanks so much, Fabian, for this moment. Before we go, is there something you would like to share with the new generation that is listening to you? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, life is in empirism. So people need to live things, need to live in life to learn. So, you know, uh, not many words really I can say that you know uh, that you I could probably I won't help you that much because things you got it you know things that I can say you're gonna forget really easy but things that you really experience with your body and with your choices there's gonna be they're gonna last forever you know so it's nothing better than really uh, just do what you need to do or what you like to do you know uh, sometimes people they go like uh, before they do anything they just go oh I read in a, in a site that uh, they say that this and that and that. Or I read a different paper that they say this and that and that. So my advice is like, a, when you have a doubt, just go for it. Don't, don't go to any website, don't go to any Google, don't go to anywhere because for everybody it's different. So you need to experience whatever you feel that you need to experience because otherwise you won't do anything. Now it's a period of confusion. Of confusion. It's so much information, so much information around that it's impossible to know, you know, if you want to let's say, let's say a black is a color that is dark, you can find also somebody going to say, oh, no, no, black is a color of light. You know, it's like, it's so confusing, it's so much information, everybody writes right now. So you don't know who is good, who is bad anymore. So you need to go to, with your intuition again. Before, you know, you just go with your intuition because you don't have books, but then now it's books from this expert, the other one, Dr. Blah, so you just go and read and just get advices. Now it's so much 
so much to read that you got to go back again and just hear your intuition again. Just try whatever you have to try, do whatever you have to do, and then you do your conclusion, girl. That's a great advice that's connecting to our own intuition and forgetting this saturation of information. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Thank exactly. you. Thanks so much, Fabian, for this time. It's <laughs> it's awesome to have you. <laughs> I'm so excited that you know the the article is is gonna be amazing, and I'm just happy to be able to share in in the readers and the audience get to hear you directly. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you very much for thinking about me, like always, and I'm really glad that I was you know this moment talking to you. Yes. Thanks. Say hello to Lucy for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye. 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 Bye.